So this video, I'm going to talk about spectrum analyzers and how you can measure their performance. Um, kind of the things that are important for spectrum analyzers and maybe you're going to go out and buy one and you'd like to kind of be able to test it or know maybe the specifications you should be looking for your, for your particular application. So what is a spectrum analyzer? It's a machine that gives you a graph of frequency versus amplitude. So I have a uh, sweep and it's measuring a signal and I have 10 megahertz carrier coming into the spectrum analyzer. So I'm getting a, a peak here at, uh, at 10 megahertz. Now my span is 200 kilohertz. That means from one side to the other it is 200 kilohertz. So it's plus and minus 100 kilohertz. So it's centered on uh, uh, 10 megahertz and it's plus and minus 100 kilohertz. All right, so we can see our signal and we can see if our signal goes up and down. So let me, this is the sig signal right now is set to uh, minus 20 dBm. Now I'm going to be using uh, dBm as the units of measurement. What is dBm? So a dB is a relative measurement. It's not an absolute measurement, but a dBm is an absolute measurement. dBm stands for dB milliwatt. So it's how many dBs away from one milliwatt are you? So if you're at zero dBm, you're one milliwatt. And here we're at minus 20 dB. So instead of one milliwatt, we go down to 0.1 milliwatts, 0.01 milliwatts. So this is 0.01 milliwatts. So I'll change this to minus 10 dBm, which is my, uh, 0.1 milliwatts. And, and you saw it go up and I'll go to zero dBm and here we're at zero dBm, which is one milliwatt, okay? So you have to be worried about how much power you put into spectrum analyzers. You don't want to blow them up. They're very sensitive instruments. So this particular uh, input that I'm using is good for 200 milliwatts. So if I go above 200 milliwatts, I'm going to kill something. So I have to be really, really careful. So if I start at a uh, zero dBm and go down from there, I'm, I'm in good shape. I'm either a milliwatt or below. So here's one milliwatt. So how good is the spectrum analyzer in measuring uh, milliwatts? So there's a cursor and it's right here in the center and it says we're at minus 3.8 milliwatts. So um, uh, I'm sorry, dBm. So minus 3.83 dBm. So why isn't it zero? Well, I have a cable and the cable has loss. Uh, the connectors have loss. Everything has loss and you need to check on the accuracy of the spectrum analyzer. So this particular spectrum analyzer, I believe, is rated at two and a half dBm, plus or minus two and a half dBm. Um, so certainly well within where it should be. Okay, so one thing that you also want to know is how much range does the spectrum analyzer have? So this spectrum analyzer goes from, I believe, 100 kilohertz to one gigahertz. Uh, so that's that's its range. And I'm going to be using a, um, a a function generator here to measure things. And it only goes up to 15 megahertz. So we'll, we'll stay here at 10 megahertz. All right. So here we are. Um, let's see. What else do we want to know? We want to know uh, how much range do we have? So right now uh, I have it set so that the top of the scale is at 0 dBm. Now you can change that. So I can change that and say uh, I want that top line to be uh, 10 dBm. So now the zero point is one division lower than that. So you can move this up and down. Um, and we want to know what the noise floor is. So I'm going to set the uh, uh, top of the display to be minus 40 dBm. So we can see kind of the noise down here. So if this is minus 40, minus 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So we're about at minus 100 dBm of noise. So another way to do that is just disconnect your signal. So you can see that the signal had some uh, noise of its own on it. So this is the noise of the spectrum analyzer. It's quite low. Now it's very, very noisy, but we can turn on averaging. So let's do that. 
Uh, let's go to averaging. Let's average uh, 10 readings. So you, see, you can see that it flattens out very, very nicely. So what is our noise floor? About minus 114 dBm. So that's a very critical uh, specification when you're buying a spectrum analyzer. Know what its noise floor is. Um, and uh, I don't remember the specification for this one, but uh, minus 100, and, 100 and, right now it's about 113 uh, dBm is very, very good. All right? And then there's an upper range. Um, this one says 200 milliwatts, so uh, 0 dBm, uh, 10 dBm, 20 dBm, 30 dBm. So about 30 dBm uh, is, is maximum for this thing. So you can go from plus 30 dBm to minus 113 dBm. So that's a quite, a, quite a good range. Okay. So let's put this back in. All right, let's go back so we can see things. I'll turn averaging off and I will set the uh, I will set the top to 0 dBm so everything looks good again. All right so the other thing that you really really care about with spectrum analyzer is how good of a resolution do they have and what does resolution mean? Well it means uh, if you have a signal next to this one can you see it or not? Uh, there's an there's a, uh, intermedi intermediary uh, bandpass filter inside spectrum analyzers, the IF filters, and you have to have a very, very narrow one to see things. Now, how can we demonstrate that here? Well, we can turn on a carrier. So this is a signal. We can put an AM modulation on this. We can insert a carrier. So let's insert a 10 kilohertz carrier. Uh, let's see. I will go to... Frequency, select AM, FM. Okay, I need to turn on AM modulation. And I need to set our carriers to 10 kilohertz, and they are. And I need to set the modulation to... Okay, so the modulation is set to 50%. So right now, these two lumps here are a 10 kilohertz AM modulated signal at 50%. So we can see we can see those two humps. In fact, we can zoom in on this. So if I change my span from 200 kilohertz to uh, 20 kilohertz, uh, I've gone too far. Uh, let's see here. I'll change this to 50 kilohertz. There we go. So uh, 50. Let's change it to. Well, that's fine. Um, 50 kilohertz. So. Um, these are the 10 kilohertz carriers, and you can see that we're seeing those really, really well. It's very easy for us to determine those. So let me change the um, frequency. Let's lower this. Oops. Let's see, kilohertz. I'm going to go down. I'm going to get them closer and closer and closer. Closer, and then the kind of it's kind of hard to see those now, right? They kind of disappeared. Uh, that's two kilohertz. So why can't we why can't we see them really good anymore? Well, there's this number up in the corner here that says bandwidth one kilohertz. So depending on what your span is, this machine automatically changes your bandwidth. Now, some spectrum analyzer you can change that independently. Um, and for this particular machine, it depends on the span, and it chooses the, the bandwidth that it can do. So right now it says, ah, I've got a kilohertz bandwidth. Uh, but I know this machine is specified at a 300 hertz bandwidth. So if we zoom in, if we go to a span of 20, 20 kilohertz, uh, our bandwidth just changed to 300 hertz. So it's increased the filter. And now we can see those spikes again. And uh, right now, these are one kilohertz apart. So we can bring them in a little closer even. Uh, oh, that was two kilohertz. This is one kilohertz. So this is one kilohertz apart. And uh, we can change that to 900, 800, 700. 
600. Now we're, we can't see it any longer. We only have 300 hertz of resolution and it's really difficult to see those. Let's see if we can zoom in even farther. 10 kilohertz. Yeah, see, they're just really, really hard to see. So you need to be about double your bandwidth. So where are we now? We're at, uh, we're at 600. Yeah, we need to be a little bit bigger than that. So now we can start seeing the humps, right? So when you're buying a spectrum analyzer, you know, resolution bandwidth is, means a lot, uh, whether you can see things like this or not. We're now at uh, 1.2 kilohertz. Um, and we can easily see those, uh, those carriers in there. Okay, another good test for a spectrum analyzer that you can actually carry out in the field. So if you, if you go someplace and you are looking to buy a spectrum analyzer and you don't have a signal generator with you, um, then here's a good trick. Uh, you can connect an antenna. So I have a, um, a two meter dipole uh, in the uh, garage here. And I am going to see if I can see anything out of the air. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to set my center frequency to 98.5 megahertz, which I know is a radio station, an FM radio station. And I'm going to set my span to um, 10 megahertz. And I'm going to hook it up to the antenna. And you can see that we're starting to see some signals. So that's out of the air, right? Um, so we can change the span to 20 megahertz. We can change the span to 50 megahertz. There we go. So that little lump there, uh, what you're seeing, that's the FM band. Um, those are all of the FM stations here in the Bay Area, or ones that we can hear from Silicon Valley. So we can try to zoom in on this. We can change our reference level. Instead of zero dBm, we'll say it's, let's see here, 10, 20, 30. Let's say, let's set it to minus 30. And there we go. We can see a better, a better look of all of those radio stations. And then let's zoom in a bit. Instead of 50, 50 megahertz, let's go to uh, 10 megahertz. And there's a bunch of stations. Let's go to five megahertz. Let's go to one megahertz. And now we're kind of looking at one radio station. This is one radio station. These are the two sidebands of the, uh, of the radio station and stuff. So um, it says that we're able to use this just with an antenna. So we can take a look at the signals where we're receiving about a minus 60 dBm signal, just fine. Um, Let's go back. Let's go back out. We're a bit zoomed in too far here. Let's go to 20 megahertz. And then we can also uh, 20. Let's do the let's go to 50 megahertz again. I like I liked that one. And then you can also turn on uh, averaging here. So we're going to average uh, five readings and that cleans it up. So now we can see those. Uh, those radio stations much clearer. So over here, uh, if I disconnect the antenna, we're looking at the noise floor. Okay, so it's picking up other noise too, just out of the air. But uh, this is a great test. I always do this test when I'm when I'm evaluating a spectrum analyzer, whether I can actually uh, actually resolve uh, the FM stations or not. So I have another trick on how to test a spectrum analyzer if you're going to go buy one and let me show you that. All right, this is a little test board that I a test board that I built so I can go somewhere and have a um, RF generator with me. Now what I used was I used two uh, crystal oscillators. So these are these uh, 14 pin or 16 pin dips uh, oscillators and uh, I bought a bunch and these are 16.666 megahertz oscillators. And I measured a bunch of oscillators and I found two that were different enough. So a lot of them were the same, but these two were the widest apart. They're 900 Hertz different. 
So one frequency is at 6664 and one is at 6673. So it's 900 megahertz difference between those two signals. And so I have a little uh, nine volt battery. There's a five volt regulator. It sends five volts to the two oscillators. The two oscillators output things. They go through two resistors and mix together and go to a, uh, a BNC on the output. So if I hook up that BNC uh, to the thing that we're looking at here, spectrum analyzer, uh, let's, uh, so I've connected the uh, BNC and we'll go back here and let me, All right, let me refocus on that. And let me turn off the room lights so it looks better. Okay, that looks good. All right, so let's change our spectrum analyzer to look at 16.666 uh, megahertz. Okay. And, uh, Looks like there's something over there. What is that one? Is that coming in? No, that's some spurious thing. 16. Oh, that's just a zero sweep problem. Okay. I'm, I'm at 16 megahertz, but I'm sweeping 50 megahertz. So I'm sweeping too far. So let's do a sweep of 10 megahertz. And let's turn off that averaging. That's annoying. Okay. No more averaging. And we're at 16.66, so I'm gonna push the button. And there we go, we get a carrier. We get a carrier at, uh, let's change our reference also to zero dBm. And so we're getting a minus 28 dBm signal, okay? And it's right there at 16.666. So let's zoom in on that. Let's go to one megahertz. Okay, we just see a single spike. Let's go to uh, 10 kilohertz. So at 10 kilohertz, we get to see those two frequencies. Those are those two frequencies that are only 900 uh, hertz apart. So the bandwidth of the spectrum analyzer is now at 300 hertz. And that was chosen because we set a 10 kilohertz spectrum uh, spread. Um, so uh, that's what a, uh, general uh, spectrum analyzer would look like if you bought one that had a, a 300 hertz bandwidth. So let's change to here. Now it has a one kilohertz bandwidth, and you can see that we really can't see the two humps any longer. So one kilohertz isn't enough to see a 900 hertz difference between two signals. Um, so it's a great it's a great little box to carry around with you and. Uh, going off to evaluate something. A lot of times spectrum analyzers, if you look up the part number, they may have one, they may say, oh, it's, it's one kilohertz, but there's options, like you get option 06, and that's like 300 kilohertz bandwidth or 30 kilohertz bandwidth. Um, uh, uh, so you need, to, you need to really investigate. So it's nice to actually have something you can carry with you and validate that what you're buying is what you're buying. Somebody may have removed that option. Uh, let me do the span of uh, 10 kilohertz again. There we go, very nice. So if your spectrum analyzer can do this, you're in good shape. 